Hey friends, welcome back to Astrology Today. My name is Mel Rose and I'm here to discuss with you today the upcoming Deccan, that is the next 10 days in our cycle, starting April 21st, which is on a Friday and going through April 30th. And uh, this is Deccan 12 of the uh, of the calendar year. So we started at the beginning of the calendar year, not the solar year with this. And that, what does that tell us? Well, it tells us that there are 36 decan, decans, 36 10 day periods in the year. Here we are at number 12. And so we're one third through the calendar year already. How's it going? <laughs> and the decan, decan 12 represents also the first 10 days of the sun's transit in the land of Taurus. So sun and Taurus is going to be a little bit of a shift in the uh, in the outer life vibrational energy. We've been in Aries for 30 days and Aries is a very is a time where you know things are getting greener and life is just sort of waking up and people are getting out and moving and taking initiative on those things that we want to get we want to do. It's nice it's hopefully kind of nice outside, <laughs> hopefully sort of warm outside, you feel more active, right? And uh, so Aries is a time when we take initiative and we ha we feel a lot of energy and drive, um, joy and enthusiasm, right? We're enjoying that sunshine. The sun is exalted in Aries. Uh, and then, you know, the sun moves into Taurus and Taurus is uh, Taurus is an earth sign, whereas Aries is a fire sign. So we're going from fire to earth. We're going from spark and drive and initiative to this sort of uh, more like a slow down and follow through vibe. So, you know, Taurus is, is fixed earth. So it establishes earth-like things like security, support, resourcefulness, um, you know, structure in your lives, <laughs> the rules that you live by, and also the, the habits that you live by, and the stuff and things that you like to have to, to make you feel like you're, you know, living a life you love. So uh, that's the first 10 days. This Deccan will be the first 10 days of the sun's transit there in Taurus. And it's a time when we're also going to slow down, follow through on probably a lot of stuff we got started in <laughs> in uh, in Aries because Aries is a time when we take initiative. So now is the time, you know, if you feel like you've been pushing pretty hard to get things going, now is the time where you can sort of steady your pace, slow it down, steady your pace, enjoy some more of the material comforts that life has to offer, or at least be thinking about how you're going to establish those material comforts for yourself and, uh, and, you know, in, instead of rushing ahead, just go ahead and give yourself the time to do things well, right? Uh, so, you know, I want to talk to you a little bit about this, this uh, tarot card that sits on the side of the page because it corresponds with this first 10 days of the sun's transit in the land of Taurus. And, uh, you know, Taurus is an earth sign, pentacles in tarot are earth element symbolism. It also, you know, is the reason I have these words, need, poverty, and insecurity up here. Now, of course, that's not the kind of thing I would normally like to make a theme of a, a, a video that I would want you to watch, obviously. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it is a theme that comes up in human life. And this is a time, you know, especially because on the 21st, Remember the Venus square Saturn thing that we started dealing with several days back? Uh, the the Venus square Saturn thing was like um, really causing disruption in our romances, really causing perhaps some relationships to come to an end, but also causing us to come up against, you know, uh, restrictions regarding other things that we like to have, restrictions uh, regarding things that we want or feel that we need in our life. And that's, you know, that's about support and materialism, structure, resourcefulness, right? So coming off of that Venus square Saturn, where it was sort of a challenge because we wanted what we wanted, but Saturn was saying, no, this is about what you need, <laughs> right? Uh, it was kind of a challenge. And now coming off of that, we're here in the Five of Pentacles. And the Five of Pentacles really speaks to, um, you know, a sense of deprivation, a sense that we are going without something that we're used to having or a sense that we're going without something that we like to have or that, you know, that we love, uh, you know, especially because it's Pentacles. We're talking about actual material resources. Perhaps some of us out there are going without you know, um, running water or electricity or going without a phone. Heaven knows everybody needs a phone these days, you know, so 
Um, first of all, think about the people in your life that you know are going without right now. And if you have something to something you can do to help them out, go ahead and help them out, right? People struggle. And uh, occasionally, it's not it's not that you you need to support them constantly, financially, materially, but, but you know, occasionally when somebody needs a little help and you can see that they need a little help, you can offer it to them, right? Um, uh, likewise, you might be going without something that you love, especially you know Venus square Saturn. If you went through a breakup, if you left a job, if you left a friendship, if a, if you know if things became unstable in your relationship with money or, um, you know, in, in my house, it's always food. We become a little unstable in our relationship with food. Okay. Food is a material resource. Okay. Food is pentacles. So, uh, this is a time to, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of mourning what we're missing. We're going without, and you see this person in the, in the picture that's on crutches that kind of tells me that we might also be sort of leaning a little heavily on those crutches we like to lean on when we feel like we're not getting what we need when we feel like we're going without then we'll lean a little bit heavier you know some of us like on the drinking or some of us on the cheeseburgers or you know some people lean a lean a little heavier on their church or some people lean a little bit heavier you know sort of into work they work more and they just go without a home life right so whatever it is that you're leaning on very heavily at this time, you know, understand, just be aware of yourself, be aware of the sense of lack and loss where wherever you might be feeling it in your life and be aware of, you know, sort of the crutches that you're using to, um, you know, to help you through. Crutches are great. They're meant to help you through if you're going without something that you need, if, you know, if something that you if you're limping along because you don't have a phone or you're or you're going without groceries this week, that kind of thing, uh, you know, there are crutches that we use to deal with those things. And, and it's it's obviously, you know, there for a reason. But, uh, you know, understand that you don't go without forever. OK, there is going to be uh, there's going to be growth. There's going to be motion forward. And that, that brings me to the conversation about the moon this week. The moon starts out a waxing crescent in Taurus. So again, about establishing our sense, sun and moon in Taurus, right? Establishing our sense of security in the world, establishing the stuff and things, the, the material comfort that we need for ourselves. And, you know, the comfort of, of the, the, the people that we like to keep close to. Um, and it's a waning, it's a waxing crescent moon. So this is a time where we're making plans as well. So it plans about how we're going to establish the comfort that we're going without right now. Um, this is what we're doing. We're making plans. We're, we're setting intentions and making goals so that we can make plans. And then we make plans until we get to that, uh, that first quarter moon on Thursday. And then we stop making plans. We start acting on our plans, unfolding them, right? So we go from a waxing crescent in Taurus to a waxing gibbous in Virgo. So by the end of that decan on the 30th, we will be approaching the full moon and we'll be making like physical efforts where we'll be doing it. It will be doing active work to, uh, to get things moving in terms of those resources that we need and in, in terms of that sense of security that we need. Okay. Virgo is what is way less fixed. It's more, it's mutable. So it, it's material in motion, right? It's materialism, it's resources in motion. So understand that by the end of this 10 days, this feeling is not going to be so heavy, this sense of loss, this sense of going without, uh, you know, we have a lot of stuff to go through to get there, but we're going to get there and we're going to find that material, that stuff that we need in motion. We're going to feel a lot more fluid in terms of our material resources. Okay, so let's get down to the days. Friday the 21st. Uh, I don't know if I said that was Saturday. I think it's Friday. <laughs> it's definitely Friday the 21st. Okay, so we've got them that waxing crescent moon in Taurus. We're planning to create those plans around our physical security, our sense of comfort in the world, having the stuff and things and the people that we like to have near us. Mercury goes retrograde on Friday. So, you know, Mercury in Taurus. This is, you know, a time when we are, again, planning, communicating, uh, and taking action in regards to, uh, you know, the, the physical security we need in the world. Okay. 
uh, Mercury retrograde can bring up some uh, shakeups and confusion about our finances and about the people that we rely on. That's that's Taurus stuff. Uh, it's not a time to be making demands, okay? And Mercury retrograde lasts three weeks, okay? Just three weeks. It's really not very long. We do this three or four times a year. It'll last through May 15th. So it's not saying, you know, people say don't sign contracts, don't do this, don't do that, don't take a new job, that kind of thing. Really, the the... The thing with Mercury is it's easy to get uh, discombobulated. It's easy to get confused, to get mixed up about things. Even if you think you're certain about what you know, you know, uh, Mercury retrograde just says, ask all the questions, read all the fine print, you know, make sure, make sure you're checking the correct boxes, like double check all of your information before you commit to anything, right? And then on Sunday, the 23rd, we are still in that waxing crescent phase, only we've gotten into Gemini. So it's more about sharing and collaborating about what it is that we're planning to do, what it is that we want to get done, you know, in time for the full moon. Some of this stuff is going to be done in time for the full moon so that we can have something to celebrate at that time. So we're still planning to create. Now we're now we're including our cohort, our co-conspirators and we're we're making plans together where uh you know it's very active it's very playful we can be creative with it uh and and really you know i like gemini because you know when you can, when you plan you can plan big when you're when you're bouncing ideas off of somebody else you know those ideas just sort of uh they sometimes tend to blossom so mercury sextile mars that day of course again mercury is in retrograde so you want to make sure you want to be clear and make very certain and not just make very certain that you're that you're uh, saying clearly what you want to say but making sure that you have all the information making sure that you have listened and heard and read and done all the stuff to get all the information okay being receptive is part of mercury retrograde learning to be receptive to information so it, it, in any case, Mercury retrograde, it, Mercury is about speed and Mars is about power. And these two are cooperating on Sunday. Uh, and that will be through the 30th of April. So that's the whole Deccan. You can achieve a lot and you can even get ahead at this time. Remember when Mercury was square with Mars and I would say, look, don't try to work too uh, too far ahead. Don't try to get ahead in traffic, right? Uh, you can come in, you can run into challenges when you, when you move ahead too fast, right? We want to keep the pace with other people. In this case, it's more cooperative. Mercury is cooperating with Mars. So you can go ahead and get ahead. You can achieve a lot. You can, you know, I'm not going to ask you to speed on the road. Please be a responsible driver at all times. But you know, if you have a chance to get ahead and you have double checked, right? Mercury retrograde your mirrors and looked over your shoulder twice, go ahead and, you know, um, it, take that chance to get ahead. Mercury retrograde calls for more careful communication and planning is all, okay? Tuesday the 25th comes in. We're still in that waxing crescent, but you see it's getting bigger. And that's a, a moon in Cancer. Moon in Cancer is right at home. Moon, moon belongs to Cancer and Cancer belongs to the moon. It's the same thing. So, uh, you know, the moon is the planet that's close to us. It has a very physical effect on our bodies, on the body of our world on our ecosystems so uh you know it's very much about your body the moon is about how things feel to you physically how they feel to you emotionally and there's and then that gets into deeper things like uh instinct and and intuition right so moon in the crescent moon in uh the the waxing crescent moon in cancer this is a time where we're going to be examining how the plans we're making feel to us right uh, it, what, what feels objectionable, what feels like a little sand in my shell, right? Uh, we want to, we want to be able to iron out those wrinkles at that time, uh, according to how things feel with the plan. Sun goes sextile to Saturn that day, and that will be with us through May 2nd. So that's a kind of a long-term one. Um, sun sextile Saturn is very, very positive vibe. Sun is about your sense of purpose in the world. And Saturn, again, is always bringing in the structure and the sort of discipline, <laughs> right? The boundaries and limitations reminding us that we have to do things well to have them last, right? 
So Sun and Sextile, Sun Sextile Saturn, excellent vibe for very diligent, dedicated pursuit of your goals. And it's also a good time to seek out a teacher or a mentor, somebody that you know is disciplined and has, you know, done something usually like similar to what you've done or just you know them to be such a diligent and persistent person that you can ask them questions about how they do what they do. How do you pack so much in today, <laughs> into a day? How do you, you know, stand dealing with all these people? How, whatever it is, that's what you're going to do. Seek out a teacher or, you know, listen to, um, you know, an elder, uh, so somebody that, somebody that has learned the way so that you can know the way. And then you can look at each other through your helmets and say, this is the way. A uh, little Mandalorian reference there. Uh, Venus is also sextile to Chiron that day, and that will also be through May 2. So these are kind of together. Venus is sextile to Ch Chiron. We are very social and receptive. This is happening in Aries, right? This is happening in in Taurus, and this is happening in Aries. No, this, well, the sun's in Taurus, Saturn is in Pisces, but these are, uh, Chiron is in Aries, <laughs> Venus is in Gemini moving on to Taurus soon. So uh, got a little mixed up there, but we are very social and receptive at this time. And, you know, the the wounds of exclusion, the wounds of not feeling like you fit in, me being embarrassed, being put on the spot, that kind of thing. Uh, we're able to heal them right now by relating with other people. Okay, so uh, reach out to the people that you like and love, the ones that, that you can really talk to and they, they know you and they listen and they care. Reach out to them, relate with them, you know, talk to them about your experience and, and you know, uh, perhaps there is something there, you know, just in relating those experiences, just, you know, sort of telling people how it feels, right? Moon and Cancer that can help you, um, unlock, <laughs> you know, unlock one of those, one of those boundaries that you've put up so that you can, um, be more relatable further, more relatable and feel more included, uh, in the future. Thursday the 27th is our first quarter moon. This is when we go from planning to acting, right? So this is the day for shifting gears. We tie up our plans. We make sure everything's in order. And we start referring to the plan and taking the action on the thing that we want to get done in time for the full moon, all right? Uh, and action in Leo, perfect. The Leo is a, is a fire sign. It's our fixed fire sign. So it's a great sign for action. It's consistent action. It is always, Leo is the sun and the sun is always burning. It doesn't do anything else. <laughs> it just burns fuel. It just shines brightly for our benefit. Okay. So uh, this is what we're going to do at this time. Uh, it's a great time to be spurred into action. We're going to be shine, shining brightly for our benefit and the benefit of everybody else, okay? Mars goes square to Chiron that day, okay? So these old wounds around identity, social inclusion that I was just talking about, these can make it tough to take action in the world, right? Uh, the, the things that we want to move forward on, the things that we're working on, Mars is in Cancer right now, right? So we're still sort of scuttling sideways as we try to move forward, but it can make it a little tough to act when we're dealing, when we come up against sort of insecurity about whether people will respond to us, uh, you know, in a way that doesn't make us feel like crap. So uh, understand that, but we've got these things happening together, right? Um, so you, to lean on your ability to relate with others. Like if you're feeling socially awkward or if you're feeling like you're excluded, you know, the, the, you know, it's, it's often I have found, you know, an icebreaker just to let people know how uncomfortable I am. <laughs> I'd be like, wow, I feel really awkward here. I don't know if I really fit in. And, you know, if I, if I say that to somebody or a couple of somebodies, then, you know, the, then people get the clue that you feel, you don't feel included. And then they will start to include you in the conversation. All right. Uh, also do your best to relate with others without trying to assert some entitlement. Okay. So it's not like, you know, well, I'm in the room too, and I deserve to have my point of view listened to. Okay. Yes, you are in the room and you do deserve to have your point of view listened to, but that's not how you get it. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, this is not, we, we don't just sort of, uh, assert our authority in a room full of people unless we are 
already the elected or appointed leader of those people, right? So, um, you know, and, and leadership isn't everything. Sometimes relating is more important. So don't go in with a leadership attitude. Don't go in with an entitled, entitled attitude like these people are going to listen to me and they're going to relate to me because they have to, you know, because I'm important. Uh, you, you, they relate to you because you're relatable, not because you're important, right? So let's, let's take a look at, you know, let's just be careful around the, the sense of inclusion and the self-importance uh, uh, on that day, Thursday the 27th, as we go from planning to acting, right? Uh, and then coming up on Saturday the 29th, uh, which will be the last day for any of these sort of active solar side um, planetary aspects uh, of this Deccan, Mars will be sextile to Uranus. This is acting to create, okay? Uranus just wants you to change things up, do something a little bit different, right? Uh, gain a new perspective. It will put you in situations that are surprising. You will meet interesting people. You will have out of the ordinary conversations. Uh, your eyes will be opened to different ways of doing things, different kinds of technology. And Mars cooperating there, that's your, your active self, your sense of assertiveness in, in, in life, your, your ability to take action and move forward, right? It's very, it's very forward motion, Mars is because we want to make achievements, right? We want to be active so that we can achieve. So uh, this acting to achieve is going to involve um, acting to gain that new perspective, to change things up, to share a different perspective with other people, right? Acting to create changes for the better, okay? Getting started um, perhaps on a more complex goal. You know, Uranus can help us sort of see a way to simplify something or see a way to, to explicate something in, um, is such that complex things look more simple and then you know it's an impulsive and positive vibe so these transitions are likely to feel good whatever upgrades you get around saturday the 29th through the 12th of may i might add uh you know just um they're going to come from taking action and it's going to be a really easy vibe and that sextile says that we generate good outcomes okay we generate something something is made out of that out of that interaction that taking action on making change Okay, so that's deck in 12, April 21st through the 30th coming up here. Um, please let me know if you have a birthday at any time during this deck in. Uh, go ahead and put it in the comments, right? And we'll talk a little bit about your birthday. Um, and please just let me know how the, how the idea of, um, you know, going without is occurring for you in your life, especially when it comes to uh, stuff you might need or, you know, going without, uh, you know, someone that you're used to having around. Okay, friends, I think that's all I have to say about it. Thank you so much for joining me. I truly appreciate your presence. I'll see you all back here soon for more astrology today.